Yo, remember, if you like what you see, please consider hitting that subscribe button and letting YouTube know that you support Black Aboriginal media. Thank you. I never charge for any information and videos. I do do this myself and spend my own money. All right, sit down, chill, and I'm gonna learn y'all something. It's American History X, and it's based on a true story, you heard? What's up, my people? Welcome back to another episode of Action News Network. I'm Action Jack, if you don't know, and I'm going to attack to tell the true story of those of us who are or so-called African-American or black American. Now, for some people who might just be watching this video for the first time or watching my channel for the first time, you might be wondering why I have feathers in my head. This is because we have been lied to about probably everything in history, everything in science and shit. I don't even know if mathematics is correct. I've been lied to about the shape of the earth. We've been lied to what they say is out of space, if, if, if there's planets, what are stars. We've been lied to. We've also been lied to about where the original inhabitants of so-called places. And I say so-called places because names have been changed throughout the years. Like, for instance, did you know up until 1949, the country that we know is India, it was on a Hindu stand. Well, the Indian subcontinent has been broken down to many different colonies and countries. Hindustan being the largest, and you had Calcutta, Goa, um, Pakistan, and um, a few others up there. Right? But the area was mostly known as Hindustan. It was known as India. Where India come from? Where Indio, India comes from the the Latin word Indio. Which I'll try to put up as a graph. Spelled E N D E U S N D O S. Of God. Or of the God. In Latin. It also stands for indigenous. It's where we get the word indigenous from. So all indigenous people can be considered Indians. It's just a dramatic, kind of anglicized way of saying Indios. Or indigenous. Your nickname, all right? When I say this to a lot of people, they get offended. I do not look African, and neither does a lot of my brethren. That's who are falsely considered African American. When the whites came here, they encountered what they called the red man. Now, we know that there's no such thing as a red person, but they are copper colored people, like golden brown nearly red, almost cinnamon-like. I am one of those people. I'm not this brown complexion because I have been mixed with white. I can't even find any white ancestor in my family lineage. Both close enough to impact my skin color to this day. In order to retain being white or having a light skin, tan skin, being amalgamated, you have to continue mixing with the whitest person that you can possibly find. You don't just have a white great-great-grandmother or father and all of a sudden, sudden yeah, your complexion changes forever throughout the lineage. I look like exactly what my family would have looked like before the white settlers came here. I'm what they would have seen and encountered when they came here. Now this journey took me years to come to me. From studying the nation of God and nerves, five percent, then moving along to studying more science temple. This brought me to Dr. Ivan Van Sertel. Both of those latter groups, aforementioned groups that I just said right there, Van Sertel and the more science temple taught me that there were blacks indigenous to him or at least there was blacks here. Now, I have a lot of issues with the Moors and the 
more strength. So I'm not here to discuss that, but I'll leave that for another time. That person will have peace solely with them at this particular moment. So when I go into that, that if you are dealing with the more science level, I would really, really reconsider that. That's all I'm gonna say. Now a lot of people are not gonna like stuff that I say, but it has been told. This is a compilation of my studies over the last, I'll say maybe six years. It was hard to say, say goodbye to Africa. It's all I, I know. That's the origin. But I promise you, when you find out how mighty our empire was here, and why they go to such great lengths to hide the truth, you'll realize how rich you are. Thanks for staying tuned to you. Get on with this history lesson. This is going to be a powwow. So please comment, like, and share. Let me know what you think. Even the ignorant ass comment, I don't care. So that's what was done to our people is so cruel and harsh that even ignorant comments don't deter me. Those of y'all who know what time it is, make sure you wear those feathers. Wear them high. Hey, before we get forward, move forward. I'm going to have to discuss some things with you. We're going to have to do a prerequisite course. Because the more you know, the better you understand. Alright? It's like a red pill, blue pill thing. The blue pill, you remain in blissful ignorance. And red pill, you'll see the truth. First, you got to let go of Africa. Because we're not from there. Then you got to learn what the real world looks like. We're on a flat earth. And there's other continents. And earth is all around us. Next, you need to know that there was pyramids bigger than the pyramids in Egypt and in Mexico, right here in St. Louis. This is how the world really looks. You see how big the continents really are? See how small the northern continents are? So are you ready for that blue, are you ready for the red pill or are you still on the blue pill? Because remember, all I'm offering is nothing more than the truth. Nothing more. Excerpts from the 1842 book An Inquiry on the Distinct Characteristics of the Aboriginal People of the Americas by Dr. Samuel Morton It is not my present intention even to enumerate the many theories which have been advanced in reference to the origin of the American nations, although I may, in the sequel, inquire whether their genealogy can be traced to the Polynesians or Mongolians, Hindus, Jews, or Egyptians. Nor shall I attempt to analyze the views of certain philosophers who imagine that they have found not only a variety of races, but several species of men among the aborigines of this continent. It is chiefly my intention to produce a few of the more strikingly characteristic traits of these people to sustain the position that all the American nations, excepting the Eskimo, are of one race, and that this race is peculiar, and distinct from all others. Physical Characteristics it is an adage among travelers that he who has seen one tribe of Indians, has seen all. So much do the individuals of this race resemble each other, notwithstanding their immense geographical distribution, and those differences of climate which embrace the extremes of heat and cold. The half-clad Fuegian, shrinking from his dreary winter, has the same characteristic line aimants, though in an exaggerated degree, as the Indians of the tropical plains, and these again resemble the tribes which inhabit the region west of the Rocky Mountains, those of the Great Valley of the Mississippi, and those again which skirt the Eskimo on the north. All possess alike the long, lank, black hair, the brown or cinnamon colored skin, the heavy brow, the dull and sleepy eye, the full and compressed lips, and the salient but dilated nose. These traits, moreover, are equally common day to the savage and civilized nations, whether they inhabit the margins of rivers and feed on fish, 
or rove the forest and subsist on the spoils of the chase. It cannot be questioned that physical diversities do occur, equally singular and inexplicable, as seen in different shades of color, varying from a fair tint to a complexion almost black, and this too under circumstances in which climate can have little or no influence. So also in reference to stature, the differences are remarkable in entire tribes which, moreover, are geographically proximate to each other. These facts, however, are mere exceptions to a general rule, and do not alter the peculiar physiognomy of the Indian, which is as undeviatingly characteristic as that of the Negro, for whether we see him in the athletic cherub or the stunted Jama, in the dark Californian or the fair Boroa, he is an Indian still, and cannot be mistaken for a being of any other race. The same conformity of organization is not less obvious in the osteological structure of these people, as seen in the squared or rounded head, the flattened or vertical occiput, the high cheekbones, the ponderous maxillae, the large quadrangular orbits, and the low, receding forehead. I have had opportunity to compare nearly 400 crania, derived from tribes inhabiting almost every region of both Americas, and have been astonished to find how the preceding characters, in greater or less degree, pervade them all. This remark is equally applicable to the ancient and modern nations of our continent, for the oldest skulls from the Peruvian cemeteries, the tombs of Mexico and the mounds of our own country, are of the same type as the heads of the most savage existing tribes. Their physical organization proves the origin of one to have been equally the origin of all. The various civilized nations are to this day represented by their lineal descendants who inhabit their ancestral seats, and differ in no exterior respect from the wild and uncultivated Indians, at the same time, in evidence of their lineage, Clavitro and other historians inform us that the Mexicans and Peruvians yet possess a latent mental superiority which has not been subdued by three centuries of despotism. And again, with respect to the royal personages and other privy-like classes, there is indubitable evidence that they were of the same native stock, and presented no distinctive attributes excepting those of a social or political character. The observations of Molina and Humboldt are sometimes quoted in D.I.S. Pirut of this pervading uniformity of physical characters. Molina says that the difference between an inhabitant of Chile and a Peruvian is not less than between an Italian and a German, to which Humboldt adds, that the American race contains nations whose features differ as esseltily from one another as those of the Circassians, Moors, and Persians. But all these people are of one and the same race, and readily recognized as such, notwithstanding their differences of feature and complexion. Alright, you just heard, you know, from a book called The Inquiry into the Distinct Characteristics of the Aboriginal Negroes of America, right? So, you gotta learn what happened to us. First, they came with Jesus, right? And smacked us with that turn the other cheek shit. Then came the money, which didn't allow us to fucking participate in that, which took away our land and our food. Then the confusion of the double speak, because we didn't understand trickery. Then came the class system, which put us on the bottom because of our dark skin. Then came the indoctrination. This is when they told you you was African. This is when they told you that you was from Africa. And really, if you look back in these old books, you see who the fuck you are. 
This is a book about from the Dutch man about his, his journeys through in, um, America. You were right alongside the, the Asian looking um, Indian. Look at this. And he's not high yellow because he's fucking half white. Indians came in all skin colors, but we were all the same race. So yeah, the Native Americans, they they our race. We Aboriginal, they're Native American. But we were here right alongside them. And they learned a lot from us and picked up a lot of our own tribal traits. And now they're parading around solely as us. They were paid off, given casinos and stuff. You know, just to, to forget that we were Indian too. So don't forget, this is who we are. Don't let me. I don't know nothing else. I wasn't eating chitlins when I was in Africa. I wasn't eating watermelon when I was in Africa. Huh? I wasn't wearing suit suits when I was in Africa. I wasn't getting my hair cut when I was in Africa. This bitch is my mama. And yours too. Except I know it's mine. Some people was ashamed to even say they was Native American again, especially living in an African-American community. Because then they told me they was looked upon as being a traitor or trying to be something that they were not. But then they knew their grandmother was an Indian. But then they knew their grandmother was an Indian. And because of the, the stolen heritage of American Indians with black blood and black people with Indian blood, I felt that it was time to bring about a new organization that we call NCBAI, the National Congress of Black American People, Indians. And when I made the announcement, in six months, there were carloads of people from California, Oklahoma, Nebraska, people that came out of the Wampanoag people in Massachusetts, people from busloads of people Atlanta, they all converged in Washington, D.C. at this little church that only seats maybe 2,000 people. The aisles were packed. They were outside all around the block. And I asked them, why did you come? Because I had to see my family. And I said, what family? I'm black and I'm Indian. And I have never been to anything where black Indians or Indians with black blood came together under one roof. Here are some Indians from Canada. I wonder what happened to their blacks. Well, they sent them to Sierra Leone. Here's a Yuchi Indian. And here's a bunch from the San Francisco area. Kind of still look like the brothers out there today, huh? Here's a, uh, a tribe of, um, I think it's uh, Choctaw. Like Here's some Oklahoma performing a ceremony dance. No Back to California again with some more of the We used to battle. We prisoners of war. I know how it feel we held out the home. But we couldn't defeat them. People look at you like you's the user Selling drugs to all the losers Mad Buddha abuse We are one race Alongside with those natives Baby on the way Mad bills to pay I mean, how much you I gotta show you? What do I gotta show you with it, huh? Hey, you gotta throw an afro on the brother You understand I mean, really look at these pictures This could be your uncle This could be your dad This could be your brother Put an afro on them, now you see who they are, right? We used to have a lot of, we used to have hair products just like we had today. Madam CJ Walker, she got that trait from just being an Indian. Used to take care of our hair, you know what I'm saying? And he's always flashy, always had jewelry and earrings. Always wore fly clothes. Look at his sister right here. Like every other black woman. I know you've seen her before. Even out here in the Southwest, these are the Pima Indians that build the canals and structures that are all around Phoenix, Arizona. You don't have to try to be something you're not. God, I can't stand it. Trying to be something I'm not? Trying to be proud of my African heritage? That's being something I'm not, then fine! I'd rather be dead than be like you. Stuck up nigger who's 
Some conclusions that slavery didn't really actually last as long as we really thought it did, and that mostly all of us was enslaved. There were a few Africans brought here, but not many. And unfortunately, there's some evidence that we might have enslaved ourselves, turned on each other. Here's our oldest ancestor, Lucia, found in Brazil. She looked like she could be anybody's aunt. They continually find our bones on this continent and we're not even told about it. And they hide it in the back of museums. That's right. I never thought I would find all of this. Find my way into this deep rabbit hole. I was just trying to find out more about us in general, but I didn't know it would go this deep. And it's not that hard to find, but it's crazy how people get defensive over it. Those who want to keep you in Africa want to keep you there for a reason. So don't trust anybody with a PhD or any kind of credentials who try to tell you with a straight face that you there's no possibility that you might be Indian. There's just no way in hell. How was the America's only two continents that didn't have any inhabitants until some agents crossed the ice bridge during the ice age, which we know didn't happen, it was false. Instead, they turned our image into this, the Sambo, which is a Spanish word, derogatory word for dark Indian. Yeah. Dr. King knew, that's why he was killed. He was actually setting up a trust and a bond for us, the same that Noble Drew Ali did. Those bonds was probably still open. Same thing with Malcolm. He was going to the United Nations, to the UN, to bring up uh, charges against the United States on what they've done to us, and you know with the rest. After that, they cracked down hard on us in general. They wasn't playing no games, because they didn't want another Malcolm and Martin. They put a squash in every movement that we created. Whether it was the Black Panthers or whether it was the Young Lords. No matter what, the history of the Blacks and Hispanics who are the Indians here in America have been a turbulent one. And as of lately, they've been cracking down even harder. 
I mean, how do you disrespect the people whose land you want? You gotta wonder if these people even know who the hell they're dealing with. But you gotta know who you are. Because once you know who you are, you can tell these people to get the hell up off of you. Because see, they playing chess every move, every moment, every minute of the day. And while you sitting around calling yourself black, everybody else has a nationality. You're not even considered an American because you keep bobbing yourself up into being an African, which was sold into slavery, according to them. So you have no rights, still to this day. So you gotta stop. I mean, do you still believe in 9-11? Do you? If not, or the Kennedy case, you know, like, why do you keep believing in this? Because white men are wilding out, man. Because their time is up. They know their time is up with the man upstairs. So they wilding on us. And all this time, just like in South Africa, we be telling them to get the fuck off all y'all. I mean, I'm gonna have to do a video on the lynchings that's going on now. That's how crazy it's getting. And y'all still think that all blacks come from Africa. And here goes your Clintons that y'all love so much. That's how they think about you. So you gotta ask yourself, how does that make you feel, yo? I mean, I've been studying for a long time now, trying to get this all together. And this last part of it is gonna put it all together. We're not engaged in domestic politics and church building or social uplifting work, but we are engaged in nation building. Interesting. The American experiment is the most tremendous and far-reaching engine of social change which has ever seen or uh, ever blessed or cursed mankind. The history of the building of the American nation may justly be described as a laboratory experiment in the understanding and solving of the problems that will confront the world tomorrow. Slavery is not the only question which come up in this controversy. There's far more important one, that is, what shall we be done with the free Negro? What should be done with the free Negro? I mean, they just stuck us in the hood in utter poverty, like here where I grew up at in New York. I mean, how wiggly was it? I mean, there wasn't as much Nat Turner's. There were more sellouts and coons during slavery. And all the while, we were just stuck in here. Mm -mm -mm. The Yamasa War, a sample of how slavery began. The Yamasa Indians were part of the Mskedjum language group. Their traditional homelands was Florida and southern Georgia. The advent of the Spanish in the late 16th century forced the Yamasa to migrate north into what would become South Carolina. Relations at first between the tribe and English settlers in that region were generally positive during the latter half of the 17th century. But problems between the races developed. The influx of white settlers put pressure on Indian agricultural and hunting lands and the Yamasa had incurred a large debt for guns and goods typically paid for Indian skins. White fur traders acted on their displeasure by enslaving a number of Yamasa women and children to cover portions of the outstanding debt. In the spring of 1715, the Yamasa formed a confederation with other tribes and struck at the white settlements in South Carolina. Several hundred settlers were killed, homes burned and livestock slaughtered. The frontier regions were well. Some fled to the relative safety of North Carolina and even more secure Virginia. It appeared that the tribal confederation's overwhelming numbers would end in the white settlement's complete destruction. This would have been true if the Confederacy had successfully drawn a Cherokee alliance. Instead, the Cherokee gave in to the lure of English weapons and other goods, and chose to ape the Carolinians. The tide turned against the Yamasa, who were slowly pushed south through Georgia back into northern Florida. There, the tribe was virtually annihilated by the Creeks, others were ruled by the Seminole. The Yamasa War took a heavy toll in South Carolina. It would take nearly 10 years for resettlement to occur in many areas. And last but not least, this is modern day Yamase. Please don't forget.
get. If you have the opportunity to, or you want to, or you like what you're seeing here, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you. And please continue sticking around with Action News Network. More to come.